Okay, this video lecture is going to be over chapter 3. I'm going to divide it up into a couple of parts so that the videos are a little bit shorter. But what we're looking at is column distillation and how this is done. So we've been doing flashes and a flash just simply means I bring some material in, let it come to equilibrium, it'll separate it into two separate phases, liquid and vapor in this case. So if I take the vapor from a phase and mix it with some new material and flash it again, or just change the temperature and flash it again, I will continue to get different equilibrium conditions and I'll get different separations of the material. So that's kind of the concept of what distillation is. So it's a series of flash operations. Okay. Now, this is the most important single operation that you're going to learn about in your chemical engineering career. About 90% of industrial separations are done by distillation. Um, so this is, you know, one of those topics you really, really do need to learn. Okay? Um, to get the streams to form these liquid and vapor phases, I'm going to have to heat the system up to boil it, and then I'm going to need to cool the material so that I get liquid formed because it's a lot cheaper and easier to transport liquid material, and I also am going to need some liquid so that I have a gravity effect. And so what's going to end up happening is I have a huge energy input. And in fact, people have estimated that about 40% of all of the energy use in chemical processing is done for distillation. So our job is going to be not just to figure out how to get a column to work that will do the separations that we're looking for, but also how to do it so that we minimize the costs associated with this. So there's lots of ways to create a cascade of flash units, and we want to just kind of look at some of these and I can get a series of separations. Let's just start here with the feed F. I bring it in, it splits into two phases. Okay, The liquid I could heat to a higher temperature, pump it to a higher pressure, or I guess that, yeah, higher pressure, and that would cause a new flash, so slightly different split of the liquid and vapor. And I could continue doing that as many times as I wanted to. I could take the liquid and drop the pressure through a expansion valve, something like that, and end up where I get different flashes, different separations. And I could take all of those feeds and I'd have a whole lot of things with different compositions. Okay, But perhaps I'm not really interested in having that many different material stream products. So I could take and feed one into the other. So truly cascading. So I'm going to take this vapor, pump it to a higher pressure, create a new flash, but the liquid is going to be fed back down into this one. It's going to receive liquid from the one above. It's going to lose liquid to the one below. And I have just this cascade of different flashes going on with liquid and vapor feed into each one. There's other ways I could do this. You can also, in between, heat and cool the material. So these are little heaters and coolers. And I could just bring the feed in, the vapor goes off, the liquid goes off, but in the meantime, vapor's coming from another stage, liquid is coming from another stage above. Or here's yet another variation where, <coughs> at the end, I'm going to take some of this material that's coming off the top, I'm going to chill it and start that as the liquid feed coming down this series of units. And similarly, I'll boil the liquid that comes off the bottom, send that back up as a vapor. So all of these are concepts that are very close to what's really done. Let's look at a traditional distillation column. So typically I bring in the feed, It'll be at some temperature. I'll pump it to get to whatever pressure I want. It'll enter the tower and I'll go through several trays, okay, where 
the stuff will come to equilibrium. The gas will rise up. These trays have ways that the gas can sneak through. So maybe it's little sieve trays with little holes in there. They may have little valves or bubbles. We're going to look more, a little bit at the equipment today. We're going to look at it more uh, in a few chapters. But the gas can sneak up into and reach another stage. The liquid can drip down. There's these downcomers over here so that it can pour down and go from tray to tray like this. I'd have a reboiler at the bottom to send vapor back up the column. At the top, my final gas that's coming off, I'll bring through, I'll cool it to condense to a liquid and then recycle liquid back through the system, taking the other liquid off as a product. Okay, So this is a very common setup. Now, some of the terminology you need is listed over here. So I'm going to bring in a feed. The product that comes off the top is what we'll call the distillate, designated D, and the product that comes off the bottom we will call the bottoms. Now at the top I said that I'm going to be condensing this material and sending some of it back in to serve as a liquid. That material that comes in is going to be designated notationally L0 and we call it the reflux. So there's a reflux that's the liquid that comes back in. Down at the bottom I've got liquid dripping down and I'm going to boil it and the material that I take off is going to be called the boil up. We designate it V N plus 1 where N is the number of stages. A last thing is we're going to talk about the column as being in sort of two halves. Okay, Everything that's above the feed we're going to call the enriching section or the rectifying section. Both terms are used. Everything that's below the feed we call the stripping section. Okay, It's about the way that they function. It'll make a little bit more sense when we hit the sections on absorption and stripping. So I'm going to pause the video at this point. We're going to pick up in the next video talking about the actual equipment.